you've ever dropped a kid off at daycare before, you know that it can be intense. You're crying, they're crying, it's a whole thing. Daycare is the most wicked thing I have ever seen. Hondo! Hondo! What's up everybody? Welcome back to the Hondo channel. This, I've been kind of mulling this topic around in my head for years, months, long time. As you know, I've been a teacher for pretty much most of my entire adult life. I started teaching back in 2000. It was actually it was 1999 and I had originally when I entered college I wanted to be a, a engineer because they made good money and then I believed God didn't want me to go to that particular engineering school so I came back home to Bakersfield and I got a degree in math but I still tried to get into engineering because that was where the money was I thought but the only thing in town that I could find was computer stuff. And so what happened was I passed the CBEST, which is a test you take it when you want to be a substitute teacher in California. I passed that and then I applied to be a substitute teacher and I got a call from East High School and they said, we, we need you to jump in and be a teacher at, at our high school. And so I was like, 26 27 that's this was 27 this was 1999 and it was very difficult i didn't know what in the world i was doing i had a little bit of training because i was working on my credential and but i but i got into a groove where i i knew how to you know build a relationship with the, with the kids and i was learning how to teach i had some ideas on how to teach because i tutored in high school and and I always believe that you just need a lot of practice. Anyway, so I've been, t I've been teaching quite a while. But in the last few years, I've come to the conclusion that public school is just... The whole idea of public school is just wrong. It is morally wrong. Because you're sending your kids away for six, seven, maybe eight hours a day. If you take them to school at seven, they get home at five because you have to work. Maybe your wife goes to work too. And your children from kindergarten all the way to, well, from kindergarten on, they are basically raised all throughout the week by some stranger. That you have no idea what they believe, what they do, what they say to your kids. And your kids don't belong to you anymore. And I've experienced this firsthand and it has made me very upset at the culture and the schools but also disappointed and angry at myself for putting my kids in the system and you know when me and my ex-wife we we knew the teachers the our kindergarten teacher we knew her she was a nice lady we, i think she was a christian but she wasn't us she didn't have our exact values she wasn't my kids mother and father and we knew of people who were homeschooling their kids, but I didn't even think much about it. My wife, my ex-wife, she didn't think she had the patience to do that. But now I look back and I think, whatever you have to do, whatever you have to do, whatever town you have to live in, whatever sacrifices you have to make, whatever job you have to quit, whatever money you need to reduce, however you need to reduce your standard of living, keep your kids home with you they need you they want to be with you they don't want to be with strangers they don't want to be with a bunch of maniac children who may or may not believe in god who likely do not and the whole question of socialization is just absolutely ridiculous it is patently absurd that you want your kids to socialize with a bunch of unbelieving maniacs the little kids that that you have no idea who they are and teachers who do not have your interests and your values. 
So socializing, the whole socialization argument is idiotic. It is completely idiotic. Your kids need to be socialized with you. They love you. They need you. You're the only person who loves them the way that they should be loved. And so as you can tell, I, I, I have quite a few regrets over sending my kids to public schools. And that was a big mistake for us. Aside from that, there's, there's a debate raging about homework and whether homework is valuable, whether it's useful. My daughter, when she was in kindergarten, the state, this is because of the, the state of California, we had to work with her on phonetics and vowels. She was in kindergarten and it was exhausting and she hated it and I hated it. It was terrible. It was torture every night. And she was in kindergarten. When I when my boys started school, the requirements were kind of reduced. But you know, they're saying that, that a lot of people. I don't know if they base this on studies or not. I'm, I'm thinking that they do. You can find a study that will support anything. But some people are saying that homework has really no value, no effect, till the kids get into seventh grade. And you have like an hour of of homework a night, sometimes more, depending on what your teachers do. At the school I was just working at, I gave my kids maybe 15, 20 minutes of homework. But they had an hour of study hall every day. And half that hour, they were already done with their homework. So I gave them extra homework because they were just acting like nuts. They're acting crazy the whole hour, so I gave them a little bit extra homework, So, but they still complained. But anyway, some people are saying that homework is just, it doesn't help. It doesn't help the kids learn. It was created to make up for the failings of public school teachers because they didn't teach them well enough during the whole time they had at school. Well, the problem with public school is that you have one teacher trying to manage anywhere from 24, and in the kindergarten it's like 20, but in the older grades you have at least 24, 25 kids, up to 30, and sometimes more. One teacher trying to do that, all this time is lost, maybe 10, 15 minutes a day, in a maybe a one hour period, trying to just get the kids focused on their task, trying to teach them and train them in these mundane routines. You come in, you sit down, you get to work. You come in, you sit down, you get to work. You come in, you sit down, you get to work. You have to do this every single day. Sometimes for months on end. And so all this time is lost in the training. So you have to give them homework. But when you have one parent working with one child, and then two, and then three, and then maybe four, even if you have half a dozen kids, you have so much more time with your kid to teach them than you have, than when you have one parent, I mean one teacher with 25 kids. So you can do everything you need to do in four hours. You can get up at nine o'clock in the morning. You can work till noon. You can work a little bit in the afternoon, you can do whatever you want as far as your schedule, whatever the kids are are able to do, and what helps them to be motivated, what gets them excited. You know, and there's been the argument where, well, I can't teach my kids algebra because I don't know algebra. But now we have these whole networks of homeschooling where you can find a parent who knows algebra, who can who can explain these difficult things, and you have activities you have these whole free Khan academies online where the kids can learn and when you even and when you have multiple kids and you have one kid who just kind of picks things up quickly and they can teach the other kids but either way public school is just it's a disaster Daycare is the most wicked thing I have ever seen. There's a video I saw a couple weeks ago about a woman. It was a woman dropping off her two-month-old infant to daycare. 
that just infuriates me. That is the most evil, wicked, demonic thing I have ever seen. Because she has to go to work. She has to make money to pay for her house. Maybe she's not married. Maybe they need two incomes. Maybe live in a, an expensive city. Who cares what, what you have? Who cares what cars you want? Or what house you want to live in? Or what city you want to live in? Sacrifice whatever you have to do to be with your kid because you don't know what the heck is going to happen at that at that daycare when you're not there and even if everything is fine they are not these these professionals they're not you they don't spend all morning with your kids they don't spend all afternoon holding your child because there's 20 other kids that they have to deal with daycare I, I hate the idea of daycare and then the other thing that I've been thinking about is having kids after you you establish you've had your career. So that's a big trend these days is people they get married, they work, they get settled in their career. Maybe they're by the time they're thirty and forty they're having kids and I've seen these fifty year old guys walk around with ten year old kids. And so what happens when you have your your career settled but you're a little older, you fit, you get fatigued much easier, much quicker. You don't have the strength or the will because your 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 strength is sapped by your job. And you're older, so you know you have the money to just give your kids whatever they want. And when they get upset, you can just buy them off. Or you can put them in front, of a t in front of a TV because you're tired. And you don't have the strength or the, or the energy to discipline them correctly. Because discipline requires a lot from a parent. It is emotionally draining. It is physically draining. You have to put your kid and just let them cry. Just let them cry because they're selfish. That's the way, the way we all are. They're selfish. They're going to cry. You got to let them just cry. You know, you, you, you can't give in to their selfishness because they're going to be selfish and they're going to get more selfish the more you give in to, to their little childlike demand, demands. That's just the way it is. But when you're old, you don't have the energy to do that. When you're older in your 30s and 40s, you don't have the strength to do that, but you have the money to give the kids what they want. And so that's what you do. So have your kids when you're young, you're strong, and you're poor. Don't send them to public school. Don't send them to daycare. You know, sell the car, keep one car, drive that car to work, live in a cheap backwater town, work remotely, whatever you have to do, keep your kids at home and spend time with them. Everything else is just, just insanely wicked and destructive your kids will benefit so much more from you than they will from some college educated and now they're all perverts in the public schools but uh anyway good night